In a perfect world, every awesome video game idea would become a reality. But our world isn't perfect, and many surefire hit games never make it past the beta stage. It's a shame to lose out on the copious amounts of sheer fun many of these games would have generated. So, let's sit through the scrapyard of canceled games and pick out some buried treasures. Whoa, nice graphics! I'd like to get my hands on that game! Gotham by Gaslight Batman plus anything usually equals success. Well, almost anything. Based on the comic book of the same name, Gotham by Gaslight would have been no different. Players took control of steampunk Batman, roaming Victorian England in search of Jack the Ripper. Why Jack? Because after dealing with the Joker for so long, it's sometimes good to relax with an easier foe. Sadly, Day One Studios, the company behind Gotham by Gaslight, was unable to sell publisher THQ on a free-roaming Batman game where Bruce goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the most infamous killers in history. Gaslight Batman lives on in LEGO Batman 3, Beyond Gotham, Arkham Origins, and Infinite Crisis, among others, all of which let you play as the Victorian-era Dark Knight to your heart's desire. Highlander Games based on TV shows and movies are hit or miss, to say the least, but Highlander looked like it would have been a hit. Your exploits as an immortal would have sent you throughout history to locales like ancient Rome, Pompeii, and New York City. Kind of like playing all the Assassin's Creed games at once, minus the crappy sequels. You'd also get to perform all sorts of cool death-defying stunts, like leaping down skyscrapers or electrocuting yourself, without actually dying. They even had an actual writer from the Highlander TV series to write the project. Sadly, Square Enix themselves did the butchering, canceling the game in 2010 for unknown reasons. The studio was probably too busy dragging its feet with the next Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts to set aside a weekend and just finish Highlander already. High 10 Bomberman If you enjoy mindless party games as much as you love fiery explosions, High 10 Bomberman would have been your jam. It was going to be a regular Bomberman on steroids, allowing up to 10 people to play at once, either against each other in groups or, if anyone's feeling particularly sadistic, 9 versus 1. More bombers, more bombs, and more explosions. Who could ask for anything more? Unfortunately, High 10 Bomberman never went anywhere aside from a few Japanese video game conventions in 1993. Now that we have Ultra HD and online multiplayer, why not give it another go? In a society that still actively enjoys turning each other into crispy critters, High 10 Bomberman would have been a smash hit today. BC In Intrepid Computer Entertainment's BC, you control a tribe of Neanderthals on a quest to kill anyone not in your tribe, thereby evolving the human race in your image. Along the way, you have to battle angry apes and gigantic man-eating dinosaurs, both of whom hate everything about you except your rich, meaty flavor. Sadly, BC was simply too ambitious. Planned features included changing weather, an epic food chain, independently functioning NPCs, and the ability to choose who to let into your tribe. The project was cancelled in 2004, but in the modern gaming scene, BC would fit right in and likely be among the best. Insane. Lots of us love survival horror games, so imagine somebody who truly knows horror giving it a shot. This would have been the case with Insane, a 2012 game directed by Guillermo del Toro of Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth fame. Insane was to be the most terrifying sandbox game of all time, plus del Toro had an entire trilogy in mind. Financial difficulties forced THQ to focus solely on guaranteed hits, however, rather than experimental horror projects. Currently, Del Toro owns all the rights to Insane, so he could always make it a reality with another game company, or simply turn it into a badass movie franchise. Provided he's not too busy explaining why Hellboy 3 still isn't happening. Silent Hills Another abandoned Guillermo Del Toro project, Silent Hills, was supposed to be the director's collaboration with Metal Gear series creator Hideo Kojima. Add The Walking Dead's Norman Reedus and you had a guaranteed win. This trifecta of legendary figures would have made for an incredible psychological horror experience on the PS4, but it was sadly cancelled. Rumors had it that Kojima was leaving Konami, which was why the project was pulled. PT, the playable teaser for the game, was pulled from the PlayStation Store as well, but you can still relive the terror if you kept the demo in your library. Sadly, it's the closest you'll ever get to Silent Hills. Star Wars 1313 As a young Boba Fett, Star Wars 1313 would allow you to navigate the wretched hive of scum and villainy that is the underground Coruscant, where there are no Jedi to keep the peace. 1313 focused almost entirely on guns, blasters, and whatever else a bounty hunter would need to get his dirty job done. Unfortunately, this amazing concept wouldn't survive the one thing more evil than the dark side, corporate takeovers. When Disney bought the Star Wars franchise in 2012, it canceled anything LucasArts had in the pipeline, including 1313. Current Star Wars game publisher EA has shown little interest in 1313, preferring to focus on more mainstream, canonical games like Battlefront. LucasArts, meanwhile, has given us Angry Bird Star Wars 2. Star Wars 1313 is left somewhere in the junkyard, likely near Luke Skywalker's dismembered hand. Mega Man Universe Mega Man is awesome! That's pretty much just science. No, it would have been even more awesome? The ability to make your own levels and customize your very own Mega Man. Just think Mario Maker. 
That was the premise for Mega Man Universe, a side-scrolling platformer that was supposed to be released on Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. We would have loved to have seen what kind of sick, twisted platforming gauntlets creative players could have shared online if this game came to fruition. And even cooler was the fact that Ryu from Street Fighter and Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins were planned as DLC characters. Sadly, the game was cancelled in 2011, so now we only have our super fighting robot dreams to hang on to. Star Fox 2 Releasing a direct sequel to the original Star Fox on the Super Nintendo would have been a no-brainer, but it didn't work out that way. Star Fox 2 would have continued the story and reassembled the original team to fight Emperor Andros and protect the Lilat system, including new ships and new characters. Unfortunately, the arrival of the Nintendo 64 stopped development on the title, although Japanese versions of the prototype leaked online in 2015. It might not have seen the light of day as an official Super Nintendo game, but Star Fox 2 is alive out there somewhere, and we'd still love to barrel roll through it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which lost games you'd like to play.